Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and salam alaikum. Welcome to Shah with the European Union. I'm your host, Kalson Abdi. Shah with the European Union is a new vlog series where we interview EU staff, implementing partners of EU funded project development experts, stakeholders such as civil society groups and ordinary Somalis on how EU projects impact their lives. My Shah series will focus predominantly on jobs and employment situation in Somalia in order to provide more insights on where are the jobs. For today's episode, we will be talking with Abdisalan Yaro, the Deputy Chair of Somali Congress of Trade Unions, Sokoto, an independent and democratic trade union center, which is based in Mogadishu, Somalia. Abdisalan, welcome to the program. And um, please tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and also about Sokoto. Welcome. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Hanson, for inviting me and giving me this great opportunity, time and space to address the issues of workers' union and also tough time to speak to the Somali people. Uh, I'm Abdi Salam. I'm the deputy chairperson of Somali Congress of Trade Union. And before that, I was the head of training and education still in the department and some time back I used to work with DRC, especially a program called Regional Mixed Migration Secretariat, but now I'm a trade unionist. Uh, Somali Congress of Trade Union was actually established in 1949, dissolved in 1969, again re-established in 1970, again for the you know, fate of time, collapsed during the civil war. We have again re-established in 2011, Somali Congress of Trade Union is a national independent trade union which has been founded on the principles of democracy, uh, uh, fairness in Somalia. Somali Trade Union has 11 affiliations, including farmers, transport workers union, education workers union, and among, among others. It has around 73,000 73,377 members, and it's registered under the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs. So our objective is about seeking a just justice society, one which recognizes the rights of workers and the citizens, which will achieve a quality life. And a quality life is not all about having material thing. It's about democracy, it's about justice, it's about, you know, recognizing other civic rights the person has. Somali Trade Union is seeking to achieve economic development, social justice, and social cohesion through solidarity, fairness, and equality. We are seeking national and international trade union solidarity since we are working with other unions, labor unions in international scope. Actually, since we have started in 2016, we have achieved a couple of, couple of things, including re-establishing the center. After the collapse of the government, infrastructure, physical and institutional infrastructure has collapsed, and the institution has been out of it for almost close to 20 years before its re-establishment. So now we have achieved to build again the national center, which has around 18 offices, two public halls, you know, a very small piece of land which is supposed to be the parking lot for the, for the, for the institution. We have achieved, again, reorganizing the, the workers' union in Somalia, including, you know, all sectors of the economy. That's how we are so far. Okay. So, Abdi Salan, um, you look like a very young person. Um, and you seem to have a very uh, big responsibility. Uh, and I'm kind of glad that, um, you know, you are doing what you're doing because obviously um, we need um, some sort of um, organization for, for workers in Somalia, you know, in, to be at par with whatever else is happening in other parts of the world. Um, so as we know, Somalia is a very youthful society. I believe 70% of the population are youth. So what is the current job situation in Somalia, especially as it relates to the youth? 
Actually, the, the current job situation in Somalia is quite frustrated by the pandemic and the upbeat virus. You know, this is a global challenge, but still countries like Somalia is always very vulnerable because institutions are weak. We don't have, you know, strong and, and, and working and effective institutions like other countries. The countries which has been hit by the coronavirus, like the Western countries, have a lot of, you know, uh, institutions and a lot of spaces where they can still support the workers. They have a fiscal policies, they have social protection schemes, they have a lot of facilities. But in our case, since the cost system is a very you know, weak, always the workers are in very you know, you know, bad situation. Time like this, it has affected everyone. It has affected the youth, particularly in the job market. They have lost their jobs. Some are not able to get you know, uh, employment mobility because of the lockdown across the country. People are not able to move from one city to another city, from one institution to another institution. You know, there is a threat of you know, job employability and the job mobility in the entire country. But particularly since all the, all the institutions have been closed, people are losing their jobs. Some of the sectors which is heavily impacted include like the education sector. Schools has been closed, teachers are not getting paid. 80% of the schools in the country are private institutions of which they are profit oriented. Mm -hmm. These schools are closed, the employers are not able to pay the teachers. So this is one of the challenges that the youth are facing in the country. Yes. Um, and also, if we look at, you know, the current context in Somalia, as we, as you mentioned earlier, we are a country that is emerging out of a civil war. Um, you know, we have been doing a lot of great progress in the past couple of years, uh, even in terms of transition of government, in terms of reconciliation uh, and development as a whole. Um, but, you know, we still have a gap between the training, education, and, and, and jobs. You know, we still have a huge population that um, is not well equipped, you know, for, you know, the high paying, the more professional jobs, which are what people are seeking, especially in the development world. So there is that gap. And a lot of youth in Somalia fall in that gap. You know, we have a lot of like, you know, uh, training in the trades, you know, training young people to be electricians, to be plumbers, to be all of this. But we also need, you know, we need doctors, we need engineers, we need, um, you know, thinkers in general. So I would imagine that a lot of the youth who are affected are actually the ones who are doing the menial jobs. Because now, like you and I, we're able to work from home, you know. But a lot of the people who have no high education, who have no access to internet and, you know, technology, are kind of left out of this continuation of work, which we're very privileged to have, you know. I think it's important to highlight that, that Somali youth also fall within that bracket of, you know, not very skilled workers, like a, a proportion of them falling within that skill, um, kind of. Yes, you are correct, uh, a huge percentage, a huge percentage of the Somali youth are in the informal sector. The informal sector is also called the casual sector, the lepras, you know, the farmers, you know, the, 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 the self-employed, you know, persons. Much of these people are not skilled. They have a, you know, few, education, little education, or at least with none. So these are the mostly affected people in the case of the coronavirus pandemic, because they don't have a skill to rely on. They don't have a space. They don't have other chances. So these are the actually coolest 60% uh, of this, you know, Somali economic sector dependence or relies on the informal sector, more than 60%. The statistics is saying like 60% to 9% are the informal sector which actually produces countries, you know, highest GDP, you know, countries highest growth, growth domestic product. It's percent in the formal sector, including the corporate and the government and other institutions like their sectors, but majority falls under the informal sector. So they have little skills and institutions were not very far plan to offer the, 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 the technical demanded skills in the market. And such a case, 
they are the most affected population in the society. Okay. As, um, just, um, just kind of a, a side question based on what we've been talking about. What is uh, Sokoto doing in terms of like, you know, closing that gap in terms of like, you know, training and, and supporting like, you know, the upskilling of, of, of workers in general? The most, of the most of the things what we are doing is all about advocacy, about protection of workers, you know, negotiating uh, on behalf of workers, uh, stopping retreatment and unfair dismissal of staff, and generally, sometimes we offer training at our center, but particularly our, our, in our case, since we have a small little capacity to do, you know, most of the technical needed, you know, skills in the market, what we are trying to do is actually to partner with other institutions so that they will be able to offer the, the demanded skills in the market. We don't have a labor school in, in our case. We don't have a labor school, we don't have a labor university, we don't have a labor college. But at the same time, we have training and education department that offers, you know, soft skills to most of the uh, members. But in the future, we, 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 we are working on to establish the labor college, which will offer the needed skills in the market. Based on what you're doing now, for example, what, what are the, the kind of supports you need to now go to the next step? I know you said you have a parking lot that um, you have, um, you know, waiting to establish your new, um, your, your new offices and, and such. Also, how, how would you want to um, influence society and education in terms of labor? Actually, actually, the point we want to start and what we are doing right now is to expand our members, to educate our members, to give awareness about the importance of being in a union and how the premiums or the, the fees they are paying, the membership they are paying will impact their lives and the entire society. That's what we're working on. We are trying to engage as much as we can, people to understand the importance and how uh, labor unions and labor organizations are very important in our informal economy and the formal economy as well. So what we need actually is to partner with other organizations is to come and give us uh, along this these uh, priorities uh, in the education and awareness and advocacy, the support that can take us to the next level. For example, we are doing, uh, we are advocating on behalf of the, the workers in terms of pay increase, in terms of equal payment, in terms of stopping and avoiding retreatment and unfair dismissal of workers, in terms of uh, uh, other rights, violation of other rights. So we need, a kind of uh, you know support to engage all these things. Apart from education, we are doing other other things. Like 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 at the moment we we are thinking about how we can have a tribunal or a judge that deals with uh, the issue of uh, labor labor in the serial issue. The country has a civil court, but it does not have a court that touches in the serial issues like labor unions. Are you getting my point? Yes. So, yeah. so actually we have a lot of things to do and we need, you know, the European Union and other partners to come in and engage with us on these platforms so that we'll be able to fight for the rights of the workers in this country. How has COVID-19 affected your members uh, and Somali workers in general? COVID-19 has affected everyone, you know, around the world. Somalia is not an isolated case, uh, but since I have said before, we are always uh, very prone and, and, and very fun for the pandemic. You know, health workers, they don't have the right equipment to even play in the front line and, and help, you know, the sick people. So they're always the first, uh, the first affected one. I want to take this great, this great opportunity to send a message of solidarity to all the Somali workers who have lost their lives those who have lost their loved ones, those who are in the hospital and still struggling with the, with, the, with the virus. I want to send a message of solidarity to all Somali Workers Union across the country. Thank you very much. And I would also like to add a message of solidarity between Somali workers and, and workers around the world, you know, that we're all Absolutely. facing Absolutely. the same challenges Absolutely. together. Absolutely.
Thank you very much for taking your time and talking to us. And I will check in with you at a later time um, down the road just to find out how you're doing and also check in on your progress. Thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.